Hey guys, um, I want to go ahead and do a, a Taylor series. I don't know if I'll be able to do the many as I want, but I'm going to try to do as many as I can. I know you guys have your test tomorrow and everything, so I just want to help you guys out. You are going to see a, a, a Taylor, okay? You are going to see a McLaurin or Taylor, and I want you guys to see the structure, okay? The first part they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you to write usually the, the non-zero terms of the McLaurin or the Taylor series, okay? So um, let's go through this. You have a function. This is from 2017. A function f has the derivatives of all the orders between negative 1 and 1. The derivatives of f satisfy the condition above. Uh, the Maclaurin series of, for f converges um, between negative 1 and 1 here. Show that the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for f are this. So we just need to verify this and, and, and just write the general term. Um, and that's pretty simple. So all you got to do is just remember the Maclaurin and how it's how it's written, right? Um, it's the nth derivative of uh, a whatever that's centered at. If it's centered at zero, you guys know it's just x minus zero. So we need all these derivatives, and it says the the first four non-zero terms. So that's you got to be careful because see that's that's a zero. So you would start off with the first derivative. But anyways. So you have f of 0 is 0. They tell us f prime of 0 is 1. And so to figure out the, the second, the third, and the fourth derivative, okay, we would have to go ahead and use what they gave us here. Okay, and just be careful. You know, nothing is pretty straightforward. You guys know how to do this. So uh, to get the second derivative, you use the first derivative, which they give us, which is 1. And we end up with negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And then to get the third derivative, okay, um, at 0, then it becomes right number two negative two times the second derivative which is negative one um and then you end up till you get the fourth derivative here and this is what we're going to use to write our um our polynomial okay and then all it is is just making sure you put it into the 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 taylor here and then or the mclaurin and then we start off with zero right and then first derivative x minus zero i just did it nice and easy just because it somebody might be confused or they're learning about it um second derivative at zero and then x minus zero to the second power over two factorial and we go through it all of these right i simplified it we just have x x squared two factorial x cubed okay um over three factorial the, the third derivative at zero okay is two the second derivative is negative one the fourth derivative is negative 6 x to the fourth over 4 factorial we clean this up and we get this pretty straightforward guys okay and then the general term uh, just for getting this part is two points the general term you can see here you know what I, I always ask myself what stays the same well the x stays the same okay and what's changing while well, the exponent is changing and n and then this is the same number n and then I can see it's alternating. So when it's alternating, usually it's, you know, you're going to have to add that negative 1 to the power of something. Usually it's n plus 1 or, or n. In this case, it's the n plus 1. But notice that the first part is what? Is they're asking you to write those first four terms, okay? Which would, don't start with 0, okay? They start off with the first derivative, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's it. So be ready when you see a tater, they're going to ask you this to expand it to the first or three or four non-zero terms, okay? So then let's go ahead and do part B. Determine whether the Maclaurin series described in part A converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges at x equals one. So now they're pinpointing specifically to a certain point, and they're going to ask you about this convergence, okay? This radius, uh, radius of convergence, um, whether it's absolute. So be ready for that, all right? Now, they centered it. Now that we have our polynomial, right, they're going to ask us to center it about x equals 1. All right. And what happens? We have our general equation right here. All right. And we got to determine we plug in x equals 1. All right. Now, remember, all right, remember, in order for it uh, to determine if it converges absolutely or conditionally or whether it diverges, you know, we have to make sure we apply the alternating series test. You got to make sure it's decreasing in magnitude. You got to make sure it's alternating and it it has a limit of zero or it's 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 it has a magnitude approaching of zero. Okay? 
So that must apply. And what happens when I plug in my, my x equals 1 here, I end up with this. And what happens? Well, this becomes the alternating harmonic series, which you know converges. Okay? And then the other one we're going to take, right? We're using the alternating series test. We're going to take the absolute value of the series. So now instead of having the alternating positive, negative, positive, we're just going to be using the positives. And this guy is the harmonic series. Now, I'm assuming because your calculus teacher, the, the graders are going to know this is harmonic, or you can just say it's a harmonic series and it diverges. That would be, you know, perfectly fine. But you do have to state that the terms are going to decrease in magnitude. Um, they're alternating and um, they have that limit of zero. Okay. So just make sure, because I've noticed that the alternating series test or the ratio test, um, they, those are popular tests that they come up often. So just be ready for that. Okay. And this one, what do you notice? Okay. We have to determine if it's absolute convergence or conditionally. Now this one's going to be conditionally because of course it converges here, but it diverges because of the harmonic. Okay. So, so it does not converge absolutely because of the harmonics, because the harmonic series diverges. Okay. And just make sure you explain this aspect right there. Very key. Okay, very key. All right. Now for part C, it says write the first non -zero, four non-zero terms and the general term for the Maclaurin series from zero to x of f of t dt. So all they want us to do is basically take this guy here, our polynomial, rewrite it using uh, the series that we already have. Okay, so I wrote it in terms of t. Okay, and we're going to take the antiderivative, all right? So we have t minus t squared over 2, all right? And then we have the general term here. And all I got to do is take the antiderivative of these terms here, t squared over 2, t cubed, right, over 2 times 3, all right? And then the general term as well. So when I go ahead and do the fundamental theorem, I get my polynomial here for g, that is given expressed like this, okay? Because we're going to go ahead and be using it. And you can tell how part A, B, and C are correlating together, okay? So part A, we had the first non-zero terms. And then part B, they ask us to center it about a certain point, all right? Now part C, they're asking us for that polynomial. And we're actually going to be using this guy for the error bound test. Okay, so I want you guys to really see that connection, all right? But that's it, all right? They ask us for the for g of x, okay, using the Maclaurin series. Plug it in right here. Do the antiderivative, right? Well, where did I get this from? Okay, we got it from, right, from here, all right? Our general, our general uh, term, our polynomial right here, okay? But we just wrote it in terms of, of t, okay? So to get that polynomial. Now, the last thing is part d. Um, and you're always going to get this, guys. You're always going to get it. If you looked at a previous test, and hopefully I can do others, but they're asking us to verify or to find or using the alternating series error bound, okay? Um, centered about x equals 1 half, okay? They want us to, to verify, okay, um, the error bound is less than this value right here, okay? Now, remember, all you have to remember is you're going to use the first unused term. So since they're using, right, they give you the P of the P sub 4, you're going to use the next unused term, which would be this guy right here, the fifth power, okay? The fifth power, all right? Now, the only thing you got to make sure, all right, you got to make sure you say the terms are alternating in sign, they are decreasing in magnitude towards zero or the limit is towards the limit of zero. Okay, but all you have to do, guys, okay, because they want us to prove this error bound, all right? And what you want to do is, all you got to do is the fourth degree, you're going to use the fifth, plug in your value of one half right here. All right, absolute value, you put it in your calculator, you get this amount, and this is a lot is less than 1 over 500. 
okay? This is the value here, all right? Um, and that's it, guys, that's it. Um, but I don't know, guys, I think, I think that you guys are, if you see those connections, you're gonna go ahead and and be able to, to do well on tests. But I want you to see, make sure you use the, the alternating series. The alternating series test comes up a lot, so just be ready for that, guys. Hopefully this helps out, and I'll try to do another one, guys, um, and just to give you as many examples to help you guys out. All right, guys, see you guys next time.